Some people seem to have an edge. Some people have an incredible capacity to manifest their genius into the physical world. What do names like Steve Jobs, Lady Gaga, Muhammad Ali, and Nikola Tesla have in common? They have all learned how to transmute their raw sexual energy into spiritualized, creative, genius energy. If you want to know more about this, stay tuned for the rest of the video. Roll the credits. It was the Buddha that said that if there was any challenge that was more difficult than sexuality, he wouldn't have been able to reach his goal. And I believe him, because I find it a challenge myself, but I also see the benefits of it. So the first thing I want you to do to become aware of this energy is just put your attention on it. When you're going about your day, when you meet someone you like, or when you're with your lover, just be aware when this energy is present in you. How does it feel when something is sexually charged? How do you feel anywhere in your body? Is there a particular sensation? Is there a particular way in which your, your brain starts working? Bring your attention to this. Bring your attention to it when you're engaging with your lover or when you're excited by yourself and you want to experiment and give self-pleasure. What's happening? Where do you feel it? How does this energy feel and taste? This is the first step. Now, the second step will be to cultivate it. Just play with yourself, play with your lover, engage with the energy, and see as you're doing it if it starts rising, if it starts building up, if you feel more and more charged, and eventually it will lead you to feel that you want to eject it, that you want to project it out of your body throughout your sexual organs, otherwise called as an orgasm. This energy is very susceptible to the mind. So what I want you to do as you start feeling more and more full and excited of this energy is to put your awareness somewhere else. Let's say in one of your chakras, could be your third eye, for example. Bring your attention there and see if this energy starts cooling down in the lower areas and something starts happening up here. In the beginning, it will be very subtle, but keep practicing and see if there's any effects. Do it with a sense of investigation and curiosity for the capabilities that you're able to discover in your body. Feel free to investigate on your own, but I also want to give you a little tour of what the ancient traditions know. There are many energy centers in the body, up to 10,000 some say, but there are some centers that are very important and are agreed upon by many of the ancient traditions. These centers are Mulabhara, the root chakra. It is dedicated to the earth element, a feeling of grounding, of physicality. It's a very dense center and very stable, not moving. It's between your perineum and your sexual organs. The second chakra is Swadhisthana chakra in your sexual organs. It's to the water element. It has a feeling of flow, of creativity, of sexual power and passion, of romanticism. The third center is Manipura Chakra, the navel. It's associated with fire. It's associated with individuality, so manifesting things in the world, or being your own self. The fourth center is Anahata. It's associated with the air element, feeling of devotion, surrender, and unconditional love. The next one is Vishuddha Chakra in the throat. It's associated with the ether element or space. It's the most subtle of these centers so far. It's also associated with creativity, though in a higher octave than the one in Swadhisthana. It's associated with a higher creativity, a creativity of genius, of refinement, also expression. The next one, the third eye, Agnya Chakra. It's associated with the mind, intuition, clairvoyance, and many of the things that are very interesting, at least for me, in the realms of spirituality. The next one, Sahasrara Chakra. This is the chakra of the saints. This is where you go if you want to find your spiritual self, if you want to find union with the universe, if you want to answer to the questions of why are we here, how was the universe created, what's the purpose of all this, this is the place you want to go to. Feel free to experiment with any of these, moving your energy there and seeing what feelings arise. 
You can also combine the techniques that I've just given you. For instance, if you want to go into Manipura Chakra, you can channel your energy there, but at the same time, think of the element of fire. All of this while you're having sex. Think you can handle it? Now that you know where this energy can be stored and transferred to, and the properties that all of the chakras have, there's also two main schools of thought with different purposes and uses for this energy. The first one is the yogic way, the Indian way. They speak about the channel in the center of the spine called Sushumna and the rising of Kundalini energy to the crown of the head, thus achieving spiritual realization, enlightenment or liberation. These yogis use this energy and move it straight up move it straight up the spine and want to make it as high and up as possible. This will bring results as knowing your through self, revealing your soul, knowing the nature of existence, the purpose of your being and why the world is like it is, merging with a one and unique consciousness. The second one is the Taoist way. The Taoist, as I see it, is a more grounded, more physically oriented path that brings a lot of benefits, both in the physical and the energetical realm. It is more tuned in to people who want to make an effect and want to live in this world. They use the macrocosmic orbit, which is a channel that moves from the back of your spine to the front of your body and has a connecting circuit at the level of the palate. Moving the energy in this way will give you a grounded feeling and it will refine the energy as you move it through the upper chakras and then down below more and more and more, until you end up in a very refined, very spiritualized state of being. Whichever way you go, the most important thing to be able to transmute this energy is developing your inner fire. As you know, in alchemy, fire is a transmuting element. It's the one element that can transform one thing into another. No other element has this capacity. So one of the techniques I'm going to give you today has a very strong fire developing property. That's the first one we're going to learn. The first technique we're going to learn is called Udhyana Bandha, and it comes from the yoga tradition. You're going to be standing with your feet shoulder width apart. Take a deep breath in, exhale, bend forwards, and without air, suck your abdomen in. Try to hold your breath for as long as possible, as it increases the effects. When you need to breathe in, just do it and hold your breath for a minute. Exhale and repeat. You're gonna feel a strong suction, moving all the dense energies from the lower chakras into the upper ones. Also an increase in inner fire. I recommend you do a couple of cycles, one next to the other, so you feel the full effects. You will feel a strong suction from your lower areas into the top of your head increasing your inner fire and transmuting those dense lower energies into spiritualized energy. After a few rounds, you will feel energized and certainly feel the increased fire in your body. You might be interested to know that this practice done at any time of the day will also increase your sublimating power throughout the day. So if you're doing this technique in the morning, you will still feel its effects if you make love in the afternoon. The second technique we're going to learn is the use of the microcosmic orbit. You can do this in any position, but I'm using here a traditional Taoist position for it, as it's easier to feel the energy moving in this way. Take a moment to ground yourself in the position and take a few deep breaths. As you breathe, Visualize the energy going down as you inhale and it going up as you exhale from the bottom of your spine to the top of your head. As you get familiarized with this movement, visualize the energy coming up through your spine, stopping for a second in the crown of your head and then start going down through the front of your body till it reaches your root again. It's important to note that you should hold your tongue against your palate to complete the circuit. Repeat 
the cycle for a couple of minutes until you can really feel a subtle cycling of the energy. Doing this practice by yourself every day will give you more awareness and more sensitivity to these practices. While you're making love with yourself or your lover, you can implement the same movement of energy and breathing in whichever position you are. You can also, interestingly, try to cycle this energy between you two and see which effects that brings. There's also some techniques for couples that you can do, and I'll be happy to share them in another video if you ask me in the comments. Handling this energy can be challenging. I find such challenges myself, but you will find ways in which you can convince yourself to hold it in, to keep it in and transmute it. I have found myself that when I reach a point of saturation, when I have a lot of sexual energy in my body, I can even feel like a negative effect. I can even feel like a little bit lethargic and, and dizzy. However, if you let your body consume that energy, process that energy after the fact, maybe in a couple of hours, even in the next day, you will feel a huge rush of creative energy, a huge rush of vitality. Your body is able to process this energy by itself. However, if you help it with the techniques I gave you, you will make it more efficient and faster. My point with this video is to state the importance, the worth of this creative energy. You do not want to waste it. You want to use it to improve yourself, to upgrade yourself, to have a strong impact in the world. How does this look like? Well, as a man, it's very straightforward. You just withdraw your ejaculation, use the techniques that I've just given you, and start transmuting this energy into creative endeavors. As a woman, it's similar but slightly different. What you want to avoid is the clitoral orgasm. It's that orgasm that is explosive and leaves you depleted and kind of like, okay, I'm done. What you want is that feeling of life force, that feeling of thing full of energy and electricity that drives you to do things. If you want to know more about the female way, I'll be happy to forward you to some amazing women that work with sacred sexuality and will be happy to guide you and explore with you as women, the way I cannot do as a man. One question that is frequently asked is, when does the sexual act end in this tradition? The thing is, it's the same as a meal. It ends when you're satisfied, when you're full. However, in the same way, I would tell you not to overindulge, not to go until you're completely saturated, but remain a little bit hungry. And after the practice, go and do a meditation. Go do some silent, still practice to integrate the whole of the experience. Immediately after that, you can relax for a bit, but I advise you to be creative, to go and play a musical instrument or write, express yourself in any way that you want, and you will start noticing the big differences as when you express yourself normally and when you use this refined creative sexual energy. So let me know how you use this energy yourself, if you practice any kind of energy sublimation, what benefits has it given you? For me, it feels like an electricity, a life force, a charge, a vitality that drives me to do more things and impulses me to create new things. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topics, please let me know in the comments what kind of thing you want me to talk about, what are you most interested in, and follow the channel, put that like button right there. Yeah, if you're watching by now, you should be liking this. Share it if you think it's valuable. This is my social media, and I also have a group called Antidote. You can find it on Facebook groups, and if you cannot find it, feel free to message me and I'll forward you through it. I hope you have a radiant day. Take care of yourself. See you soon.